Hey everyone, how's it going? Today I want to talk about propaganda. In the most literal sense, propaganda simply describes something that promotes or attempts to instill an opinion, idea, or concept. Typically, propaganda has a negative connotation as it's often used in the context of misleading information, but at its base the word is actually neutral. Regardless, though, we're using the word in its more negative connotation today. In a pre-World War II situation where Germany wanted to show off to the rest of the world and demonstrate their technological and military advancements. This is a plane made with the intention of setting records. This is the Messerschmitt ME-261. Its story begins all the way back in 1936 with the Summer Olympics in Berlin. The German government, who had just risen to power three years ago, recognized the propaganda value inherent in a spectacular world event like the Olympics. Such a major event gave them a clear stage from which to show off to the rest of the world. While the Olympics was going on, Nazi anti-Semitism was a bit restrained so as to put on a good face to the rest of the world. A massive stadium was built, German flags and Nazi flags were hung everywhere, citizens were told to be on their best behavior, etc., etc. The main point of the games to the German government was to make Germany just look good. Other countries had been critical of the new German government and their blatant anti-Semitism, so a concerted effort was made to try and counter that. This then takes us to the next Summer Olympics in 1940, to be held where else but in another Axis country, Japan. Funnily enough, Japan also intended to use the games as a propaganda tool to make themselves more palatable to the rest of the world. After their invasion of Manchuria in 1931, soured global opinion against them. So, while Japan was planning to use the Olympics in 1940 as propaganda, so too was Germany, but in a different way. Instead of trying to make Germany more palatable to the rest of the world, they would instead promote German technological advancement and, more subtly, the German military. Born in the 1936 Olympics was the modern inception of the torch relay, where the Olympic flame would be lit in Olympia and delivered to the host country. As Germany was the starting point for this modern tradition, they decided to use the very next one for their own purposes. What the German government decided was that the torch would be brought over to Tokyo, Japan by way of Germany. Specifically, the torch would be flown over to Japan in a direct non-stop flight, which would then set the record for longest non-stop flight at over 5,500 miles. Of course, at the time, Germany didn't have an aircraft actually capable of doing this, so they had to make or find one, and they would find an aircraft in Messerschmitt. In 1937, Messerschmitt independently began Project P-1064, a study into a potential long-range reconnaissance aircraft. For the basis of that project, Messerschmitt did not create a new design, but instead used a modified variant of their own BF-110 heavy fighter. The overall structure of the design largely mirrored the BF-110, but just much bigger. As the design was already intended for long-range use, it was the perfect aircraft for the 1940s Olympics propaganda flight, and the German Air Ministry officially selected and approved the design, giving it the official designation of 8-261 or ME-261. Measuring in at 16.5 meters long and nearly 27 meters wide, the ME-261 was 4.5 meters longer and over 10 meters wider than its BF-110 counterpart. Apart from the size difference, there was little else that visually differentiated it from the BF-110. Internally, though, all of the focus would be on achieving the highest flight range possible, 
there would be absolutely no weaponry to speak of. No bombs, no machine guns, no cannons. Instead, increased fuel storage would be the main focus. While the fuselage would hold some of the fuel as normal, a great deal of the aircraft's fuel capacity would come from the wings. Its rather wide wings would act as fuel tanks, and as a result, the range would be substantially increased. Inside the comparatively narrow fuselage would be housed five crew members. The pilot, co-pilot, and radio operator all sat towards the front in the main cockpit, while a navigator and flight engineer were located towards the tail. There would also be enough room in the fuselage for a small crew resting room, which, if the 261 was going to be flying over 5,000 miles in a single trip, was absolutely necessary. Powering the 261 would be four engines converted into two engines. In each engine nacelle, one on each wing, would be two Daimler-Benz DB601 engines. The engines in each nacelle would be coupled to run as a single unit, or power system in this case, and they would be given a new name, the DB606. Each 606 unit would power a single four-blade propeller. With each of these units having 2,700 horsepower, this would bring the top speed of the 261 up to around 350 miles an hour, a top speed that was pretty similar to the BF-110. Additionally, I should note before I forget that early in the 261's life, it would receive a nickname. As the plane was to be used for a propaganda flight that promoted Germany, the plane drew the interest of Hitler. Because of his interest in the project, the plane would unofficially bear his name as the Adolphine. But anyway, while initial design work on the design was still underway in 1938, the initial planned use of the 261 would hit a major snag. The year prior, specifically on July 7, 1937, conflict would arise once again between Japan and China. While tensions had been simmering ever since the Japanese invasion of Manchuria, an incident involving a missing Japanese soldier reignited direct conflict between two countries. With Japan now in a state of war and needing to focus on said war, this led to Japan forfeiting being host of the 1940 Olympics. This, of course, would mean that the intended non-stop flight from Germany to Japan would not be able to take place. Still, though, Germany would be able to make the propaganda flight, albeit a much shorter one, after hosting privileges were then granted to Finland. This much shorter flight would only be about 700 miles instead of the original over 5,500, but there was still some kind of propagandistic value here, so work on the design would continue, and construction on three prototypes would begin in the spring of 1939. However, later that year, the project would hit another little snag that nearly doomed it altogether. That little snag was, of course, the largest mass death event in human history, World War II. As September approached, Germany increasingly focused their design, production, and manufacturing on the war that they planned on starting. This meant that while the 261 was a derivative of a military aircraft, it solely being a promotional propaganda plane made it expendable. Because of that, construction on the design ground to a near standstill, and further work on the design was placed far down the priority list. As work basically came to a halt and the war began, the original purpose of the 261 would flat out no longer exist. With a major global conflict beginning in September and Finland being invaded by the Soviet Union in November, the Olympics would just be outright cancelled. Now, the 261 was a project without a purpose. 
It wouldn't stay that way for long, however, as work on the 261 prototypes would ramp right back up the next year, as their long-range capabilities made them rather intriguing as reconnaissance aircraft. The first prototype, the V-1, would be completed and first flown on December 23, 1940. Unfortunately, I could not find any information regarding the handling of the 261 during its initial flight, but one would have to assume that it handled rather similarly to the BF-110, just that it was bigger. In this initial flight test, Messerschmitt would estimate that the range of the 261 would be over 12,000 miles. If true, this gave Germany potential reconnaissance of half the circumference of the globe. They could easily take off from Berlin and spy on Russia, Britain, the United States, just about anywhere they wanted, to be honest. Of course, as the 261 was designed around long-range flight and nothing else, it couldn't really hold any guns or bombs. So, even with this range, it didn't present a real offensive threat. The Germans were aware of this as well, and as the second prototype, the V-2, was made and flown in the spring of 1941, the Germans began brainstorming some ideas for the 261. One such plan was to drop propaganda leaflets in the continental United States, but nothing ever seems to have come from this plan. Testing of these two prototypes would continue into 1943, and that year the V-3 rolled off the production line with some improvements. The DB-601 paired engines, the DB-606s, were replaced with DB-605 pairs, then referred to as DB-610s. Each DB-610 had 2,900 horsepower, and this brought the top speed of the 261 up to around 385 or 390 miles an hour. In April 1943, the V-3 would set an unofficial, never confirmed, endurance flight record, flying 2,800 miles over 10 straight hours. This sort of record-setting flight would be the peak of not only the V-3, but the 261 project as a whole. The V-3 would end up grounded shortly thereafter in July after one of the legs collapsed on landing. After being repaired, the V-3 would fly in a few unspecified long-range reconnaissance missions, but it is unknown if these missions ended up being significant in any way. In the meantime, the V-1 and V-2 sat in an airbase in Bavaria, unused, where they would be irreparably damaged in an Allied bombing raid in 1944. The Germans decided not to repair the aircraft, and they would be scrapped. It is not known what exactly happened to the V-3 in the end, but considering it doesn't seem to exist anymore, it too was likely scrapped. In the end, I think the most memorable thing about the 261 was the nickname, specifically the comedic value in the plane being named after Hitler and amounting to basically nothing. Perhaps they should have viewed that as a bit of an omen for the future. But in all seriousness, the ME-261 serves as an interesting example of how countries want to use propaganda to help promote themselves. In this case, having an aircraft exist exclusively for propaganda, and then having to figure out a new purpose on the fly when that doesn't work out. The 261 really just ended up being a waste of money with a kinda comedic nickname given its context. Alright, and with that we'll go ahead and end right there. So, thank you all for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. While I was writing for this video, I tried to think of another plane made exclusively for propaganda, but I couldn't think of one that was in the same mold as the 261. There are planes built for promotion, but not necessarily country propaganda like the 261 was. If you can think of one that I can't think of, write a comment about it. But anyway though, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you learned something. So, see ya!